But what we're gonna talk about is how you can turn this into this. Before we get into that, quick shout out to coffee. Uh, no brand in particular, literally just coffee. You know, the thing that keeps us running on empty 24 seven. Here's to you, coffee. Now, without further ado, so this is actually a secondary parts kit. This was from a 1955. This is a semi-auto conversion with a 16 inch barrel. Now there are certain auction sites online that will sell you a 16 inch barrel with a six inch extension you can put in there. The traditional barrel was a little over nine inches. And if you put that on with a stock, it becomes a short barrel rifle. So I currently have a 16.1 inch barrel with a six inch barrel shroud extension. As you can see, this bad boy looks a little bit like an anteater. It clearly was not the uh, most aesthetically pleasing gun, but at the time, they just needed it to work. As you can see, the paint job is something a little out of the norm. This is almost like a homemade red tiger I did. But anyway, on that certain auction site, they'll sell all the parts you need. Now, it's very important that you do not, and I repeat, do not assemble this gun in any way prior to getting your semi-auto parts. So, because as you saw on the first kit, the lower part of the receiver is still intact, we're gonna start with that. As you can see here, you may not be able to see, there's actually a hammer in here, as opposed to the old one, which basically just had a little stop, almost like a door stop that would come up and down. That would just grab your bolt on the reciprocating motion. And due to the fact the PPS-43 had a fixed firing pin, that's another modification you're gonna have to do, and we'll get into that down the line. One thing you gotta do to convert this to semi-auto is to put a hammer in there. I've been told by a few different people, a traditional AK-47 hammer will work. I did not use that. There's a company called Pioneer Armory or Armament or something along those lines that sells these bad boys. It's a kit specifically made for this. You gotta drill out the rivets that are in the trigger guard and right in front of the trigger guard. And you're gonna put these two cap head screws in there that are gonna hold it in place. You simply pull the trigger and there goes your hammer. Now, realistically, that's about the only modification you're gonna have to do is to put a trigger in there for the semi-auto conversion. Once you put the trigger in there, your safety that traditionally lifts up is not really going to do jack shit. It's more so just there for the look, so keep that in mind when you build this bad boy is you do not have a safety. Now, you can modify it to some extent to make that safety work. I'm personally still in the works on this project, and I am not to that point yet, so I am not really focused on it. That's about enough of the lower, let's get on to the upper. We'll take a quick peek at the old one. Right here, you're gonna have a pin and that pin actually drives down through to hold your barrel into your trunnion. That's gonna have to be drilled out to remove your barrel. I don't know to what extent you can see this, but the barrel has been cut from the base all the way out with a torch. And sometimes that makes it rather difficult to get your barrel out. I promise you with a little bit of motivation, you will be able to get it out. Sometimes you need to grind, cut or file it and it will eventually come out. And once you get that out, you're on to the next step. The new barrel is gonna be cut perfectly at the trunnion section for you to drop it in there. Now, if your trunnion was damaged at any point during the cutting process, they do sell new trunnions as well. You may have to get one. Again, you got a little rivet on top. That's gonna to help hold your trunnion in place and you're gonna have one that's gonna come through on the bottom. And that's the original one that you're gonna to have to drill out for your barrel to come out. It actually runs all the way down through. You may have to drill it from the top and the bottom. Backwards. Top, bottom, hold the phone, coffee break. One of the things that is incredibly important to keep this gun legal is to have a welded in denial bar. The denial bar runs vertically inside the receiver to prevent you from being able to use the full auto bolt. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's basically just a divot that goes down about a quarter inch and runs all up the top here. That same group on that auction site will sell that exact piece. It comes as a receiver section about nine inches or so long and you're going to re-weld it back together. I happen to go through with Bondo and just Bondo over the top just so you don't see that little divot all throughout it. But as you can see from the inside, kinda, it's right in here. Next I went through and cleaned up all the boogers that were left by the cutting torch. Once I got them all cleaned up, went through and beveled my edges of the re-weld kit with the new pieces and the old ones. Made sure everything aligned perfectly using, I believe it was an inch and an eighth aluminum tubing to run up here as a jig. They do sell a jig if you'd prefer, which actually goes down into the trunnion and into the barrel, which gives you a much better reweld. Highly recommend it. 
but it can be done at home with some pretty basic tools. I then had to make sure that everything was entirely square so that that bolt is gonna freely run in and out of the receiver. So after I got the receiver all welded up, everything was looking good. By the way, I recommend using a TIG welder, not a MIG welder. I did use a MIG welder. Sometimes it gets a little too hot and it burns right through. It's rather thin sheet metal, so do your best to not burn it as much as possible. I then essentially repeated the same process here of cleaning up the cuts and the welds like this bad boy, made them all centered, squared them up, tack welded it first, went through, laid down a bead all around it, ground it down, et cetera, et cetera. After all my welds were looking good, ground down, and I was happy with it, I went ahead and attached this little Picatinny rail. Now this Picatinny rail is actually from an AR-15 and it's aluminum, so I wasn't able to weld it on there because of two dissimilar metals. I'm not saying you can't do it, I'm just saying I couldn't do it. I didn't have the ability to do it. So I did use JB Weld and it held pretty damn tight. I was happy with it. Ground all the JB Weld down and was able to paint. Next onto the painting, I painted the entire gun with a red high temp engine paint. And this does have ceramic in it, which gives it a much better finish. After you do the ceramic paint, you let it harden, let it dry. Then you take Dawn dish soap and you sprinkle the Dawn dish soap in any pattern you would like. However you would like it to look, if you want it to be red tiger, zigzag, checkered, I don't, it, your call, whatever you want to do, do it. You don't want to let the Dawn fully harden and then you're going to hit it with the black and you're going to cover the entire gun with black spray paint. Now one thing I would highly recommend before you do any painting is to tape off. I still have my tape right here on the side of the receiver. Tape off your trigger if you want. I wanted my grip to be a different color, hence you can see the red on the bottom, black up it, red tiger-esque. But whatever you don't want to be painted, do your best to tape it off. After you spray the black on and it seems to have settled pretty well, you're going to take it to a hose and you're going to spray down and wash off all the dawn. As you wash off the dawn, you're going to notice the bits of red starting to come through. After all the dawn's washed off, go ahead and let it dry, pat it dry with a rag, do whatever you got to do. And just for a little extra look, I went ahead and used high temp clear engine paint with ceramic to give it a real nice finish and prevent it from chipping. This is the final result. I'm pretty happy with it. Originally, I did a blue tiger, which I love the look of. It was a nice dark blue and uh, I fucked it up. But anyway, this is your end result. As you saw, started out as a parts kit in a million different pieces. This is how we finished up. Put a little optic on it, a little red dot, point and shoot. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get this thing out and actually shoot it. The only thing left I have to do is finish the bolt. Now I ground down the little stop on the bolt. As I said, it's a little doorstop-esque device in here. And the bolt itself also has a little divot that that catches in. So I had to ground that down so that there's no possible way that that bolt can be put into this gun. The next step will be to mill a slot for that denial bar I was talking about that's up in here that allows that bolt to slide freely in and out. Then I gotta throw it on the lathe, I gotta drill out the fixed firing pin, and I need to make a spring-loaded free-floating firing pin. The free-floating firing pin obviously is allowing the hammer to strike it and boom. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This, go this gun was a lot of fun to build. It was a learning experience. This was my first time doing a parts kit and I think it turned out pretty well. There were times where I kinda lost my motivation and I'd put it down for a few weeks and then pick it back up and do a little bit. and. So yeah, other than the bolt, she's pretty much ready to go. And again, as I said, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to click that like and subscribe button so you can stay tuned for more videos just like this. And as always, until next time, stay safe.